Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create that freeze frame clone trail effect, but this time with panning and tracking motion in After Effects. So before we begin this video, make sure you leave a like on it below, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet so you don't miss any of my new videos, and go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you want to stay tuned with me, live streams behind the scenes, and more. So this time we're working in After Effects, and I've just got this skateboarding clip on my composition. And what we're going to do is find a spot where we want to have a freeze frame cut it out and motion track it along the panning angle of the camera and have the two combine for a cool effect. So to start off, let's make a duplication of our original layer. I'll just use Command C and Command V. And on this duplication, let's find the exact moment where we want to create the freeze frame. I'll do right here, a pretty nice and easy spot for us to cut out, especially with this really bright sky background. Now what we want to do is cut the clip at this point so I can go to edit split layer or use the shortcut shift command D and then I can just delete this second half because I don't need that. So now we've created the exact moment where the original clip and the freeze frame will meet but we have to actually make this clip a freeze frame first. So let's right click go to the time options and choose freeze frame. That'll create a freeze frame right where your cursor was and now we can see the whole clip is stuck on that frame denoted by this little square keyframe. Now we just have to cut it out, which should be a very simple task since we only have one frame to do. So go to the top, grab your Roto Brush tool, double click on the copied layer, and then just create a selection with the Roto Brush tool by clicking and painting in the areas that you want to select. It's kind of like the quick selection tool in Photoshop. So you can see this pink outline is After Effects telling you what it's done. If you hold Alt or Option, you'll see the cursor will turn red. So in case you need to make any corrections, you can paint in areas that you want to remove. So if it overreached. And also you can go to Window, open the Brush Panel, and adjust the size of this brush if you needed a bigger or smaller work area. But you can see this created a perfect selection since the background of the sky is essentially white. A really good example to work with. You can actually see what your selection looks like by toggling the alpha and different background options here in the menu. So you can see if there's too much jaggedness or if you messed up a little bit. And you can use the options in the effects control panel under the roto brush mat like feather, contrast, and shift edge to create a bit cleaner of a selection. Now we're not actually going to be needing the entire start to finish because if we take a look at our original clip, that portion of the scene doesn't come into play until right here all the way to about right here. That's the only time that that area is revealed. So we really only need this few second portion in the middle. And it's probably going to be similar for whatever example that you're working with as well. So in my case, I know that I can cut the clip right here. So I'll just pull that other end in and have it start at this point. So we only have about three seconds that we actually need. Now one thing you could do is press freeze at this point and it'll go through each frame and apply that same roto brush. However, this takes a bit longer and it's not really necessary because the frame is not moving. It's the same exact still image every single time. So I'm going to toggle the transparency grid on so you can see that it's a transparent object. I'll go to composition, save frame as file. Now I can just save this kind of like a PNG. You have the option to save it as like a Photoshop sequence, but I'm going to choose PNG and then make sure it's set to red, green, blue plus alpha. Press OK and I can export that out to my desktop or wherever I want. So I'll press render and now it should be on my desktop. So this is what I saved. So at this point, I'm going to find that PNG that I saved, drag it onto my composition and just make sure I cut it to right about the same lengths that the original clip was. So now if I wanted it, I could get rid of or delete that actual clip, but I'll just minimize it so I have some flexibility if I wanted to go back. But we now have the PNG cut out on top of our video clip and it meets up right at the right spot. But you can see this is the problem with panning shots is your cutout kind of looks out of place until the actual moment that they meet up. And that's where we're going to use some 2D camera tracking to fix that. And it's pretty simple. I'll walk you through it. So let's go back to our original clip. I'm just going to hide the visibility of everything else just so we can work cleanly. And let's expand the tracker panel. Here we have some options to track motion in our clip. So I'm going to start right where I need to, right about here. And I'll choose track motion. 
This is going to leave a track point on our clip for us to begin adjusting. So I noticed I'm still on my roto brush tool. So I'm just going to go back to my pointer tool and I can take this track point and place and expand it over a specific point in my grid. So you're going to have to take a look at your specific scene and analyze some points in the clip that are pretty distinct, have good contrast and stay the same. So in my case, this little ledge has a nice corner and it stays relatively the same. It doesn't get obscured by the guy throughout the whole duration of the clip that I need. So for the first point, I'm going to put it right here on this corner. And now you can just adjust the target hit boxes to be just about as big as you need. Be careful, the bigger you make them, the longer it's going to take to analyze. So make them just as big as you need. Now on the tracker side, this is just for tracking position. But in our case, to get a little bit more in depth, we're going to choose rotation and scale as well. And that's going to give us another track point to place because it wants to analyze from two points. So in this clip for a track point two, I'm going to use the far back corner of that same ledge. So I'll take this track point, I'll move it over here. And this also comes with that little attaching arrow, which you want to make sure goes from the center of your track point one to track point two. So once you have those pretty accurate on your spots, what we're going to do is analyze. And when you press play, it'll just start analyzing each frame as the clip plays. But be careful not to let it go too long in in case of the track points moving off the screen or you can see at that point the skateboard kind of knocked one track point out of position but right here i'm gonna press pause because i don't want them to go off the screen and if anything weird like that skateboard thing happened you can see there's a bit of a jump that might end up leaving a bit of jumpiness in our final results feel free to go back adjust your track point maybe i'll make this a little smaller so that the skateboard doesn't get in the way next time and try again if you need to. So don't be afraid to try it different spots or just see what works best for your clip. It's going to be different each time. And in that specific example, you can see once I adjusted the track point a little bit, it didn't get messed up by the skateboard. So that results in a much smoother line of motion. Now what we want to do to actually use this information on that PNG is go to layer new and create a new null object. On this null object, it's basically just an empty layer for us to plot those data points and keyframes onto. So go to edit target and choose the layer to be the new null object that you created. Now just press apply and it'll apply all of those X and Y dimensions onto your null object. And you can see it creates a keyframe for the position, scale and rotation, which we all had checked on. Finally, all we have to do is go to our PNG cutout layer and make the parent that null object. That'll tell it to just follow whatever the null object is doing. And when I turn the visibility of that back on, you'll see that the object does follow the position of the camera. However, it starts and stops totally in the wrong position. So what I'm going to do is go to the very last frame where I need it to connect and just move this clip over so that the starting point is in the proper position. Now when I go back and release, you can see it perfectly comes into frame like it was always there. And because of the way we cut and considered it, we don't have too much extra clip in the beginning. So I've got the clip, it comes in, and then boom, he meets with the frame and it just plays out like normal. And you could repeat that as many times as you want if you want to have multiple different clones for an advanced effect. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new future videos. I'm looking forward to connecting with you guys on Instagram. Go follow me at Justin Odisho. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.